Today on Focal Point, we are going to learn about the Intercollegiate Athletic Program with the coordinator of the Athletic Department, Lindsey Grace. Next, we are going to see what students have to say about the Olympics and learn about the Center for Male Engagement. Stay with us. Welcome to Focal Point on CCP-TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm Darlene Muntz, a student in the theater arts curriculum. My guest today is the coordinator of the athletic department, Lindsey Grace. Lindsey was assistant coach at Temple in 2008 and 2009. And in 2004, she was the captain of Temple's first softball team to ever win the Atlantic 10 championship. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you for having me. What is your role as athletic coordinator? My role as an athletics coordinator is I'm responsible for the, the matriculation for our student athletes mm -hmm. in regards to their academic success, in regards to ensuring that our intramural activities are being brought to all the student population here at the Athletic Center, as well as the health and wellness programs. So first and foremost, we have to make sure that our student athletes maintain their credits as well as GPA when they come in. We're responsible for nine intercollegiate athletic programs. They have to be full-time, they have to have a certain GPA, and they also have to have study hall, which is our colonial corner. Um, we also have to make sure that our intramural activities kick off as soon as we say they will, along with our health and wellness, because everybody knows you have to be healthy. When you were in college, did you participate in intercollegiate sports? I was extremely blessed to be able to play on the Temple University softball team. Um, so it was a great opportunity. I actually give all my thanks to, you know, being able to articulate, being able to, you know, teamwork, camaraderie, life skills. Um, it's very vital when you're a student athlete, you have to make sure that you pass your coursework to stay eligible. So it set me on the right path for academics in order to be able to complete my bachelor's degree. How did the experience benefit you personally? Personally, it was a great experience. Um, those are my sisters. Uh, I was able to be with my teammates and my coaches more than my actual family. I'm from Massachusetts, so it's about five and a half hours away. So I learned to grow that this was my family. Um, being able to have that family-oriented like relationship with them, um, being able to come to my teammates if I needed anything. Um, I was able to, to experience the, the feeling of being a Division I athlete. Um, being able to receive the resources that I need if I need help in academia um, in regards to my coursework, being able to receive the camaraderie, being able to receive the communicational skills. Um, we're a team, we're in it to win it. And I think that I was able to transition that into my work life. You know, I'm able to speak, speak to certain people, communicate well, social skills, as well as being able to be a part of things, so. Lindsay, what intercollegiate sports are offered here at the college? Here at the Community College of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. we offer nine intercollegiate athletic programs. So I'm just gonna divide it up. So in the fall season, we have men and women's cross country. Um, we also have women's tennis, and then we also have women's volleyball. Now let's transition to the winter sports, which we have our men and women's basketball programs along with indoor and track for both men and women. And then for the spring, we have men's tennis and out, uh, outdoor men and women's uh, track and field. What are the requirements that a student has to meet in order to participate in the sports? Great question. Uh, first and foremost, as soon as they come to us in athletic center, we ask them first, are you a full-time student? A full-time student means, are you enrolled with 12 credits, four courses for three credits each course? Once they have said yes to the 12 credits, now we need your official high school transcripts along if you did play at another college. So if you did play at another institution, we need those official college transcripts as long as with a, a waiver if they played at that college. So they have to be full-time 12 credits, mm -hmm. official high school transcripts, official college transcripts, and then also a physical form that, that you give to your doctor and or physician. Mm -hmm. And that's before you can even try out for the team. And that's part of our NJCAA rules and regulations. Okay, because that's what I was going to ask you. Is that how they become part of the team? That's correct. Okay, great. And then you try out, and then hopefully you make it, okay. and then you're part of our family. You said participating in sports was good for you. How would it benefit students getting involved here at CCP? 
Great question. Well, first and foremost, it benefited me because it taught me time management skills. Mm -hmm. And for the student that's here at the Community College of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. it's going to benefit them as well. We stay on each one of our student athletes. So you have to attempt the 12 credits, pass the 12 credits with a 2.0 or higher each semester. Um, you're also learning time management skills. You know, our student athletes are up early practicing, going to classes, going to their study hall, and then having practices and getting ready to go on the games, whether it be home or away games. Mm -hmm. So you're getting so much for being a student athlete. We're providing them with the resources, whether it be you know, going to the learning lab, having tutors. So they're able to receive everything and an opportunity to go on and play at the Division I, Division II, Division III level at a four-year institution. As athletic coordinator, is intercollegiate sports the only thing offered here at CCP? No, we actually offer a plethora of opportunities like intramural activities. Now, intramural activities is different. So a lot of students will come in and question, um, so do I need to be full-time to play intramurals? Absolutely not. You just need to be a student, faculty, staff, administrator, even alumni. If you paid your alumni fees, you can come in and play, partake in any one of our activities offered. As well as our aerobics, we have a beautiful fitness center that you can come in, do a cardio workout, and the weights as well. Last question. If students want to come out and support the teams, where can they find the information at? Oh, that's great. And we do want your support. Okay. Yes, come on out. Yes. <laughs> you can definitely come on our Facebook page, which I have here. You can come by the Athletic Center with our bookmarks. So for our Facebook page, we're Community College of Philadelphia Athletics. And then for our Instagram, for those of you that you use Instagram, is at CCP Athletics. And then our Twitter account is at the CCP Athletics. Again, Facebook is Community College of Philadelphia Athletics. Instagram at CCP Athletics and a Twitter account at the CCP Athletics. And we hope to see you. Thank you, Lindsay. It was wonderful having you on the show. And thank you for having me. The 2016 Summer Olympics is going to be held in Rio this year. Fans around the world are starting to get excited. Let's see what CCP students have to say about it. The Summer Olympics is very important because, you know, everyone watches it all over. It allows athletes from around the world to have sort of like a, a publicized event on what they do because then it allows people to see that uh, people from other countries take place in these events. It shows feats of strength. It shows what humans, what human beings are capable of doing uh, in regards to sports and fitness and just to show what, uh, what the human body is capable of camaraderie within countries and a tradition. Biggest competition, biggest stage in the world. The Summer and Winter Olympics are important uh, because it allows athletes from around the world to have sort of like a, a publicized event on what they do because then it allows people to see that uh, people from other countries take place in these events and that you know it's just not their home country that might be the best at that event. The Olympic Rings to me symbolize a beacon of hope and prosperity. Many of the Olympic Rings are a union to show camaraderie between the countries. It signifies unity between uh, countries and people, how uh, you know, we're all one race and how anyone can, any one person can from anywhere can basically accomplish feats of you know, epic proportion. The Olympic rings represent the different nations. So it, I believe it's five rings, and I think the five ring, three is three rings at the top, there's two rings at the bottom and they represent the, the um, seven major continents. The Olympic rings stand for the five colors of the original countries on the flag. Like, um, I know one of the colors on the Olympic flag is red and blue. So if you take the white background of the flag, you take red, white, and blue, you have America's original colors. I think the, the award signifies, I think the Olympic award signifies, you know, okay, you made it to this point and you are the best, the second best, or the third best at what you do. Uh, the Olympic Awards signify uh, the best, the second best, and the third best uh, human beings on the planet in that particular sport. The gold medal says, hey, you're first place, you're better than like anyone else that does this event. And then, you know, silver and bronze are second and third, which means, you know, they're the second and third best. I don't know where the Olympics came from, but I believe that it started in Europe. Greece, I think the Olympics came from Greece. 
I think the Olympics came from Greece. The Olympics came from, or I believe, Greece, the Athens. The Olympics originated in the country of Greece back in 1896, I believe. That's when uh, Greece had brought together a couple of the world's best athletes from, I believe, 12 or 15 countries. I prefer Summer Olympics. I really like Summer Olympics because it's more of like stuff outside. And the summer you have your, your tennis and your basketball tournaments and I enjoy it all. I like to watch the, uh, the relays, the, um, the gymnastics. I grew up around skiing and around the Winter Olympics, plus I'm a really big fan of hockey, so I think that uh, I think the Winter Olympics are my, are my favorite games. I personally prefer the Winter Olympics over the Summer Olympics because I'm more of the winter-oriented sort of type. Uh, I grew up watching an event called the X Games, which is like like the Olympics, but for Americans. Like if you want to be in the Olympics, I think you should definitely go for it because a lot of people get really far in the Olympics and it's, defi it's something that you love, so why not do it? I mean, everyone should do what they like, right? I know I can't wait to watch the 2016 Summer Olympics. Now we are going to take a look at the services provided by the Center for Male Engagement. CME was founded in 2009 and it was really based on some data that the college was uh, undertaking. And based on the data, African American men were persisting at the lowest uh, rate as well as academic um, performance. And so as the college, we knew that we had to do something different. It's needed here and it's needed in other campuses because the affinity groups usually relate to other affinity groups, whether it's women, whether it's people of color in general, uh, whether it's veterans, whether it's other groups of people. This is one of the first times that, and I believe one of the unique outreaches that's done at a community college like this, that really values, and I'll use that word, values the interaction and information and sharing and growth of black men. CME has helped me in numerous ways, but the most important way is uh, the camaraderie that was built here and the trust. And it, it was able me to get out of my own way, enabled me it knocked some of the barriers down that I was facing socially. And um, the internship has given me the experience to, to actually have practical um, practice with the skills that I've learned here. It strengthened it in many ways. Um, I came into community college wanting to be a biology major. Um, and it wasn't until I got into CCP and CME that I figured out that I actually wanted to do psychology. And that was a more suitable field for me. By giving me mentorship, helping my social skills, uh, hiding my network, um, meeting a lot of people that's uh, already got degrees or already been successful, or already being successful in the, in society. CME students will gain, I think, another level of again the word value. I think as we go forward, I know as a young man, I was always seeking to find people who who would bring me to a point of valuing. Uh, them or valuing me in their situation and bring me to an understanding of new concepts but yet understand me as a black man as I move forward and the unique challenges that I have. So as the program moves forward I think more and more of that is a rich part of what CME brings to the table. CME is needed because when, the, when there's hope provided for individuals to who otherwise wouldn't receive it, then the, their outcome is much better. The Center for Male Engagement um, helps the, the males understand why they're in school and how to better themselves while they're at school. There aren't too many avenues for us as young black males. And even the avenues that we do have, they aren't orchestrated by older black males. With Kev, Ricardo, Cameo, and Eric, we have four black men that are have been in the same position and some of them are still in the same position. We're not looking at somebody who's talking down to us, we're looking at somebody that's saying, I'm going through this, I've been through this, I'm going through this, and this is what you need to do. One of our, our founding um, principles is um, the affirmation, I am because we are. And so that means that everyone is accountable for everyone else's success as well as, as failures. Um, and so what, what we wanted to do is allow other men to see that they have value in themselves, feel affirmed, not only for the, who they are, but what they are and how they're perceived, and, and, and not only at this institution, but also in, within the communities on, on globally. I would not have been at 
as far as I am now without the support of CME. I had a destructive behavior. CME has provided me with an atmosphere to change. And uh, with that change, has created the success road that I'm on, a road that I call the redemption, the road to redemption. The support system that the director of the program, along with the support coaches, provided for me to get my classes back and on top of provide a few um, additional books for me. Um, I don't think I would have had the opportunity to potentially graduate in the summer. The CME has just really showed me how to love myself and be myself and don't let nobody, like, change me. I don't have to be changed. I can learn about other things, but I can always be myself. Well, that information is good to know. That's it for today. I want to thank my guest, Lindsay Grace, for joining us and the viewers for tuning in. You have been watching Focal Point, the Community College of Philadelphia magazine show on CCP-TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. All segments for Focal Point are produced by the students in the digital video production curriculum. I'm Darlene Muntz, a student in the theater arts curriculum here at CCP. See you next time.